Hey everybody, probably give everybody a couple minutes here to get in here and get started, but uh, yeah, kind of exciting. Um, live, Monday night, woohoo! It's uh, fun and nice. This channel will likely be a lot more quiet because I don't have as many people liking it yet. Hey, three of you, nice, welcome. Pretzel boy, Justin, nice. welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see. Hey, Zachary, nice to have you. Thanks for joining, everybody. Um, so, yeah, I, I was gonna, well, I'm gonna show you my new Vader sound system because it's really, really awesome. And then I realized how um, cracked and <laughs> my poor armor is really taking a beating over the last year and a half that I've had it and used it and used it a lot. So I realize I'm probably gonna need to send it off to get repainted and repaired a bit um, soon because look at this. I don't know if you can see it. See the big crack there, the big crack. Well, that crack, that crack was already there. I fixed that from underneath. There's a crack there. And then I've just found this crack right here, which really kind of stinks right there. So I do have another set of armor that I guess means I have to put together and put the hinges on and get ready to go with because this one is obviously not gonna last too much longer. I have kind of abused it too because I've done all kinds of crazy stuff. I actually ran in costume, which is really, really hard. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if that footage ever makes it on a vlog. I don't know if it will. Um, but still, it's fun armor. I like it. It's nice. It's also huge. Uh, anyway, okay, so the big news is, like, I've been working and working and working to get rid of uh, this, I don't have them down here, but speakers on my belt because I don't like the huge, giant speakers on my belt. And um, so I uh, got the idea from a guy named Gordon Tarpley, who is also a YouTuber. If you haven't checked him out, you should check out his channel. He's a really cool guy. He does C-3PO and creates all kinds of stuff. Really neat guy. Lives in California. Uh, but he gave me the idea because I think he's using one on his C-3PO um, to use transducers. And transducers are a little, essentially they're speakers, but without the part, the cone of the speaker that makes the sound go out and uh, go. Hey, Dark Biker, nice, welcome. ROTS Vader, wow, you more brave than I am. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, the transducers are, uh, they're kind of like a speaker, but they, they uh, cause the surface of whatever they're attached to to vibrate. So I thought, uh, it has to be able to work for Vader because, you know, I've got a chess box and this stuff. And um, and so, uh, hey, Imperthene. So I got a pair and uh, what, tried it out on the last two troops. One was a hospital troop and one was um, a park troop uh, this weekend, which, by the way, was so hot. It was like 85. It was sunny. It was no wind. And I was in black and well, the whole group, we were all just out in the full sun the whole entire time. It was so insanely hot. I don't know how anybody does it in like hundred degrees. Maybe, maybe don't, I don't know. Um, anyway, but so back to, um, back to what I was talking about. So the transducers, you attach to a surface and they turn the whole surface into a speaker, which is really, really cool. My only, I didn't know if it would be loud enough or, or clear enough, uh, because, you know, this is fiberglass and it's not a totally flat surface and stuff. So uh, I tried it out. Let's see if you can see this here. And so I've attached one here and one here. And these are little 20 watt four ohm resist, uh, transducers. Hey, John. Absolutely. We, uh, he says, been waiting for this. We'll do yours up next. Yes, we will. Uh, it works. It works good. Um, anyway. So I actually do have another pair of different types of transducers. I just want to see if there's much difference in the sound and stuff like that. So we'll see. Hey, Ramiro. Hey, Walter. Um, but these things, these things work so well. I was shocked. Like, 
uh, I'm, I'm not using my belt speakers anymore unless we're in a loud environment then I'll put them on and just crank them because it's the only way you'll be heard of anything at all but even in the park we're outside with all these people talking and, and you know noise and stuff like that uh, even in the park it, it was I was able to be heard and the breathing and everything and the cool part is it comes from it sounds like it comes from right here like from your face which was also uh, one of my <clears throat> one of my pet peeves about the way I had my sound system before, which was great because I had the chest box and the belt box it was plenty loud and clear, but I didn't like the fact, and it was kind of driving me crazy, that the voice didn't come from here. Um, it, it's, you know, when people got close, then they kind of noticed the voice wasn't coming from the helmet, and that was bothering me a bit. So, hey, Michelle, thank you. Thanks for the comment on the new channel. Uh, so I got this set up and tried it at the uh, hospital troop, which was great. It worked really, really well. I did it there. I put the the transducers on and then hooked um, my belt speakers as well, just to make sure. I've been playing around with it here at the house for a while, and I was relatively certain it would work out well there. And, of course, my friends who I troop with, Brian and Jen and everybody who was at that troop, helped me to kind of uh, fine-tune it a bit uh, as far as the volume and the the a few things like that so it really really helped now um for me this was fairly easy to do because i use the rom effects revo and it has a uh amplified out see if i can do this up yeah amplified out right there and then it has a headphone out and a mic input so i use a headphone out for my belt speakers and my chest speaker but the amplified out i'd never really used it's like uh four to eight ohms um up to 50 watts is what it'll drive so i um yeah, I ran a cable up through the armor like this, down my back, plugged it in, and um, it worked really, really well. I do have footage of that, and I'm working on editing it now. I don't think it'll be up tomorrow. It might be a couple days from now, but uh, but it is it is going to be out there, and it's really, really cool. Um, yeah, actually, very, very cool. I really, really have liked it a lot. And so, um, let me see. I was going to see. I thought I uploaded a clip of it but I can't remember if I did or not. So I'm going to check real quick. Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, let's see. I need to edit this real quick. I'm going to make it so you guys can see it if you want. Um, and I'll put the link in the description here. Uh, let's see. Unlisted. I'll just make it public. Publish. Just about there. Oh, stick with me. Stick with me. I'm just about there. Um... Okay, let's see if I can do this on the fly. Um, I'm going to put it in the description of this video. And then uh, after this video is done, you guys can click on it and watch it if you want. Um, and yeah, so anyway. But uh, this is... Um, I was super, super excited because it just... Like, so at the park, then when we went to the park, I did not put my belt speakers on. I was like, okay, I'm just, I've got to commit to doing this. I've got to go all the way. And so I just, uh, just went with the transducers and the ROM effects, which was kind of cool because it actually gave me room to, um, to Velcro this onto my belt, not for footage, but just to have with me in case something happened or, uh, you know, in case we had an opportune time to get some footage of us doing something shenanigan-y because we tend to do that a lot. Uh, and it went really, really, really well. Even in the park, I was able to be heard um, clearly, especially by those close up. And uh, and yeah, so I was really, really excited. The one thing I've noticed is there's a really fine point, and Brian and I were working back and forth on this quite a bit. There's a really fine point where the, the uh, transducers are going too hard and they're vibrating everything too much. And so it kind of distorts every the sound. And then there's the point where it's it's just just right. And then a point below that where it's too quiet. Um, it's really, really uh, tight in there. Um, but thankfully with Brian's help um, at the hospital troop, especially we were able to get it dialed in really, really, really sweet. And it just sounded great. And I'm super, super excited about that because one, um, it's easier for me to suit up now, but then two, it uh, is lighter because I don't have two pounds of speakers on my belt. And it just, it was driving me crazy that every time, every time I saw a picture of myself, I could see the speakers in the picture. And I just, I didn't like that. I, it, I, it's kind of stupid, but um, 
I really want to look as close to the original Vader as I can. And so getting the speakers off my belt, for the most part, except for really loud venues, uh, it's helped that tremendously. So um, that's that. I've seen some of you are asking questions. So now that I've said a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Let's see. Hey, support guy, thanks for tuning in. John Gavlik asks, is 12 watts split enough power for two transducers? Should be. Um, it should be fine. If you're thinking what I think you're thinking of like, because um, I know uh, Gordon Tarpley, he basically took his acre apart and used the power um, system from that to drive his, and I think he was only using 10 watts. So a uh, 12 watt would be plenty. Um, I don't even really think you need to do two. I think you could do one in the center or maybe just off center and then um, and then it'll be fine. It'll be plenty. And John, just for you, buddy, because I've got two more coming that are different. Um, we can we can try them these two out. The next ones coming are bigger and I'm gonna I'm gonna put them on this or on my some one of my armor and try them out and see if they, if they sound better or if they're if they're if they do better volume wise. Um, then we'll go from there and I'll have these two available that are on this armor now or I'll have the armor, um, you know, could tell you whichever one you need to get if you if I'm using both of them that sound the best. So one thing about transducers, the surface that they're attached to makes a huge difference on how they sound. Like thin, um, really lightweight surfaces uh, sound really crisp and really clear but they don't have as much base and body, which for Vader is really important, obviously. Uh, and then really thick, thick uh, surfaces or heavy surfaces have a lot of base, not as much clarity. And if it's too thick, you just don't really hear anything at all because it can't vibrate. And so when I tried it, I tried it on my chest box originally, which is resin. Um, and it just, it just, you, it couldn't do anything. It couldn't vibrate it. And it was partly probably because it wasn't a large surface, but it's partly because it's just so dense, it just wouldn't vibrate it. The cool thing when I first got them, I just stuck them on my desk, like set them like that and said, and I turned my whole desk into a speaker, <laughs> which is really fun. So anyway, yes, John, we will get you going. And I think there's probably a few other people up here who are thinking about doing it too. And I think, is that light? I think that light's too bright. I'm going to turn it down just a hair. There we go. Oh yeah. So much better. Right? Is that better? I think that's a lot better. Um... Yeah, so that's the big news from me that I'm really super, super excited about because it's like getting a few pounds off, which is awesome, and then um, simplifying setup, suit up, and everything, just awesome, totally awesome. So I'll, um, I will link the, the uh, I'll link the transducers into the description of this video so you can go get them if you like and um <laughs> kwmc can i say it quick again i don't know if i can i uh let's see how long have i been going so far i don't know if i can uh basically i got new a new audio system that's going to allow me to get rid of the speakers on my belt and in my chest box um, for most events for loud events i'll still need the speakers on my belt but for most events i have these two transducers which turn basically turn this whole armor uh into a speaker it vibrates the whole armor oh i will say uh on a side note it's weird because you feel uh it, the whole thing vibrates and so every time you talk it just moves and so that took a little bit of getting used to it wasn't as bad as i thought it would be it just uh it just was different and then i was kind of joking around with brian that you know if i cranked it it'd be like giving myself a massage every time my breathing kicked in or i said something because the whole thing would vibrate like crazy it wouldn't sound pretty but it would definitely vibrate so um i'm gonna like i said i'm gonna link those uh transducers into the description here as soon as i can find them online again real quick um uh let's see i think i can i think i still have the link here i'll see if i can do it real quick right now but um anyway uh so yeah kms kwmc it is awesome and if you aren't uh if you are a darth vader um person then uh or a 
you, you should see the thread and stuff that I'm doing on the Sith Lord detachment about it. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, hey Brian, welcome. Glad you're here. <laughs> yeah, Brian got to experience it. It's like it's really cool. You, you put put you, when you touch the and I'm breathing, you can feel it the the armor like move with the breathing, which is it's really really sweet. So Pretzel Boy says you haven't used any voice amplifier for your Kylo. Just use my voice, and most people can't tell the difference. It's true. Most people can't tell the difference, and especially if you can do a good impersonation. For me, um, for Vader, like I can speak pretty low. It's harder to speak really, really low, but I really wanted that um, that little bit of robotic kind of sound because it's so much a part of Vader. And then I need the breathing too, anyway. So, plus, me talking through the helmet just doesn't sound that great compared to having the voice changer on there. So. Uh, uh, let's see here. I'm going to try and find um, these transducers for you all real quick because they are really awesome. Um, they're made by Dayton Audio. Uh, 25 BT4. Let's see if I can find them real quick and link them for you guys. Uh, yes, I can. Woot, woot. Um... So this link here in the description is is um, the thing. So if you want the excuse me, if you want to know about the transducers, I linked them in the description there, um, which will uh, also it's an affiliate link, so it'll help me out. It won't change anything for you but it'll help me out a little bit um on my endeavors here so uh but yeah the uh i was really really excited by how well they performed and i kept asking brian i probably was maybe driving him crazy um how things sounded because it's kind of hard for me to believe <laughs> i'm an audio guy i should know this stuff but it's kind of hard for me to believe that these two little speakers here sound as good as two two uh, or three acres and um anyway it sounded great from what he said it sounded clear it even sounded to me and i guess to everybody else it sounded a little more real like not so thin and uh but just a little more full the voice sounded a little more full so that was really really exciting and yeah so oh brian if you haven't you know what actually i know what these cracks are from um on saturday i got a couple of hugs which i'm not a huge fan of but that's what these cracks on this shoulder bell are from so it's not not anything major but i'm gonna i'm gonna probably have to send my armor to get repaired by my buddy who painted it for me in the first place who does amazing work <sighs> not bad actually for a year and a half of trooping 74 73 events something like that in this armor plus all the times i've just put it on around the house or like messed with stuff and tried stuff out um it's pretty impressive i was figuring and i know a lot of guys that they get their helmet and their armor repainted every single year once a year because it just it gets used and abused and mine uh certainly has and when i do things like running down a hallway with it all on probably not the best idea but i wanted to see if i could do it i could i was out of breath in seven steps flat i was totally done because <laughs> that was all i could manage but uh yeah whew, man it was fun so support guy you join the sith lord forums the 501st website good you start on your vader got a couple of questions on the forum will you get removed for activity uh inactivity uh, yes, you will, but it's like it's got to be a year or longer since you logged in. It's not based on like how many posts you have or don't post or whatever. It just is based on if you haven't logged in and over a year, you'll be bumped to a user group that um, is not an active user group. So um, you won't be removed. Like if you don't log in for years, then you might get uh, your login, not your login privileges revoked, but your posting privileges revoked and you'll have to email somebody from the command staff or the or well email that command staff to get it reinstated but like i said it's all based on your login activity so if you're logging in and stuff don't worry about it it's not a big deal um so yeah yeah i was a little bummed i just brian saying 
ah about the the uh, cracks and I just discovered them tonight I was a little bit bummed about it so I honestly I'm surprised it hasn't been worse sooner because man I've taken some hard hugs from big guys who are not gentle when they come and give you a big round the back slap and hug and it really doesn't it, it hurts a lot and uh, anyway I'm surprised I'm, I'm really surprised his armor hasn't broken more already but it hasn't it's pretty impressive um so let's see walter 66 star wars the last jedi hype excited about that i'm very 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 excited about that i saw kylo ren's new ship which i think is pretty sweet looking um kylo ren's new costume is starting to grow on me a little bit I, i'm not a big fan of the pleat thing still or not the pleats but the quilted vest thing still um or coat whatever uh, I am a fan of the cape. I think the cape is cool. I think it'll be really a big pain to wear and make because it has weird diagonal lines and pieces from all over. I'm curious to see if they do anything of the backstory with the cape, like if it was Darth Vader's cape that they pieced together or anything like that. It'd be really fun to find out. Um, I am excited to see uh, and find out more about Snoke and who he is. And yes, I think The, the Last Jedi is going to be a great movie. So, let's see. Volkswagen Gamer pre-ordered a Nova Shore Trooper kit. Can't wait. It'll be until late March till it ships. Yeah. A Novus, uh, they do deliver. They just generally deliver really late. And so, um, yeah. Best of luck to you. I hope it gets there sooner. Um, <laughs> Walter66 says, Darth Vader can't run. He can only walk slowly and be intimidating. I don't know. He doesn't walk that slowly. He really doesn't walk that slowly. He he moves pretty darn fast at his walking pace. Um, but yeah, I don't know that he necessarily runs either. I just was curious if I could try it. And I did. And nothing fell off, which is kind of surprising. Anyway, Brian Peterson says, you mean besides your shoulder belt falling off while rallying the crowd? Yes, yes, yes. I meant all the beer drinkers hugs, all of the drunk people's hugs. Those were all painful. And I'm surprised that nothing got busted during that time. The crowd thing was because I raised my arm up too far and pushed the shoulder belt past where it could go. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so. James Crossley said, Timberline Garrison has a guy building an Episode 8 Kylo. Yep, there's a few people building an Episode 8 Kylo. There's actually quite a few on the Sith Lord Detachment that are building, building one. Including Dawn Bright, who's finished hers like two months ago well finished her like seventh revision of hers two months ago and um walter says i should take advantage of the cracks and goes battle damage vader from the force unleashed uh yeah battle damage vader does not have an official place in the 501st right now and um i've seen a few really cool looking battle damage vaders is not a thing i want to do personally uh, James Crossley said he spent a ton, of time, a ton of time on the pin tucks with a quill vest. I think I know who you're talking about. And yes, oh my gosh, those pin tucks with the quilted vest. It's just insane because it's not like just sewing straight lines. It's like the, you know, my, the tucks have to like go back and forth and stuff. It's crazy. Um, support guy says, I'm so stumped. I don't know where to start. I need to learn how to use the form so I can make a work in progress post. Just don't know where to start on my suit. Um, so the best thing you can do when you join the forum, obviously you said hello and you, you introduced yourself. Hey, I'm so-and-so from so someplace. And this is the Darth Vader version I want to build. And then, uh, you don't, don't post anything else. Just start reading. Like if you want to build an Empire Strikes Back Vader, read all of the work in progress threads from Empire Strikes Back Vaders that you can find. If you want to do Return of the Jedi, read all the Return of the Jedi ones you can find. Um, especially, uh, some of the guys who are, um, kind of, uh, real active. Uh, there's a guy, um, that does a great ESB, uh, TX boy, the, the Sith Lord attachment leader has a great ESB Vader. Um, there's another guy named Darth Dog that he is a fantastic ESB Vader. He made a lot of his stuff himself. So that's a really good read. And, um, for ESB, if you're going ROTJ, my thread's a good read cause I documented pretty well. And I think most of my photos are still up from photo buckets, money grab. Uh, and, um, 
there's a few others in there. But anyway, just, just start reading as many w uh, work in progress threads as you can. Then when you've got an idea of what you want to do, what you want to buy, what you want to make yourself and stuff like that, then you post your own work in progress thread and list it out there and wait for people to give you advice. And then you can go from there. So the big thing is if you wait for advice, you won't have to buy things twice or you won't make mistakes in that respect. And um, so, yeah. Let's see. Helmet is a great start. Makes you commit to it. Yeah. Helmet is a great start. Um, it also is kind of torturous because you can look at a helmet sitting on your shelf for a while and then it's like, ah. But helmet and armor are probably one of the best things to start with because, one, they have a fairly long wait time, generally, depending on who you're getting it from. And then um, you will need the armor to get proper measurements for your uh, cape when you get it. So helmet armor is a great place to start. But do some research, read and find out about who the makers are and the various strengths and weaknesses of the different makers. Um, although really right now we have some great, great makers on the Sith Lord Detachment doing some great stuff. Uh, let's see. Okay. Retro Gamers asks, who's my least favorite Star Wars character? Yours is Jar Jar. Mine is Jar Jar too. Uh, I, I, I don't care for Jar Jar. I don't care for him in the Clone Wars. I don't care for him uh, in the movies. I just don't care for Jar Jar at all. Um, it's funny because my kids don't mind him at all. They think he's hilarious. and I just, I just don't like him that much. So uh, <laughs> Candyman says the photo bucket situation is poop yes it is that is the most blatant massive money grab just insane uh basically if you don't know photo bucket upgraded their updated their terms of service and unless you're willing to pay four hundred dollars a year you can't have your photos on photo bucket shown on any third-party sites you could uh for i think it's a hundred dollars a year you can have links to your photos but not they won't show up as photos and for four hundred dollars a year you can show your photos on third party sites which is ridiculous so i'm like a quarter of the way through switching all of my photo links in all the threads that i've done to a different hosting provider now because i just no way i'm paying four hundred dollars a month uh let's see uh, thanks, Pretzel Boy. He says he loves mine and Dawn's work. Dawn's work is super impressive. That girl's talented, man. She can sew anything. It's crazy what she can make. Uh, support guy said you want to make ESB, but you're coming across a lot of NH stuff. Yeah, uh, keep digging. There's a lot of ESB builds in there too. Right now, there there's a pretty good chunk of NH builds going on, but but there's a lot of ESB in there too. That's there are great reads. Like I said, Darth Dog, uh, who he comments pretty often, so you should be able to find him pretty easily. And um, and THX Boy is also a great read on on ESB stuff. So and then even reading the A and H stuff or any of those things, it, it it helps. Just just start reading as much as you can. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Walter says Jar Jar made the Empire possible. Yeah, I know that rumor you're referring to. Um, retro gamers, no Jar Jar never died that we have seen. So. Uh, let's see. Most <laughs> Volkswagen Gamer says most threads are pretty much AWOL because of Chum Bucket. Yeah, that's why I'm suggesting the few threads that I'm suggesting because they still have their photos up. Um, yeah, it's a bummer. It's really, it's just unfortunate that they decided to do that because I think they probably would have made a ton of money if they'd gone with $30 a year. A bunch, tons of people would have said 30 bucks a year. Yeah, absolutely. To save the headache of relinking all of my photos in thousands of forums across the world. But instead, they decided to just go, I, I don't know. They're going to, I think they're going to end up like GeoCities and MySpace and other forgotten startup tech companies that did something similar and are now non existent. Um, <laughs> Retro gamers though he became a street clown after Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> You're not kidding, look it up. That's true, I forgot about that. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh let's see. Nick Hunter asks, do I have any saber forged lightsabers? You have Luke's Return of the Jedi. Awesome. I have a re Luke Return of the Jedi hilt, and I have another one called Fury. Um that are both empty right now that I'm gonna build out as soon as I have time. Right now, um, I am. It's taking time for me to uh, 
to do other things um, and to work on these string blades, which I've got a video floating around somewhere about uh, that I'm experimenting with, which is really, really cool technology I'm really excited about. And I'm sure I'll be showing it to you all here as we go and as I get further along in the process of, of working with them. So, <laughs> Amphrathine, I'm not doing a Krennic costume. Uh, sorry, wrong guess. Try again. Uh, yeah. So, and the other costume is coming slowly, very slowly. Candyman asks if I'm enjoying or building NeoPixel. Yes. So I have a NeoPixel blade that I'm building, and then I have a string blade that I'm building. So the string blade is individual LEDs that I am soldering together, in about 150 of them or so, in a long line. And then the NeoPixel blade is two strips back to back with some diffusion and stuff like that. So I'm doing both. I'm going to try and see which one I like best, and then I'll probably um, sell the other one that I don't like the best. And yeah. I don't know if I'll ever offer that for anybody because it's a lot of money. Uh, it's fairly labor intensive and it's different, but I don't know. Maybe who knows? We'll see. Uh, Volkswagen gamers working on a black series, Luke Graflex with NeoPixel blade. Awesome. Awesome. I really like the NeoPixel stuff. It's really exciting. I think it's really, really cool. Walter66 asked me if I'm doing a Death Trooper costume. I am not doing a Death Trooper costume. I am doing a costume. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing a Death Trooper someday. It's not going to be anytime soon, but I yeah, wouldn't mind doing it someday. Uh, support guy, did I build my saber hilt like the one you've built for other people, or did I buy it built from another saber builder? You mean my, uh, my Vader saber? Uh, my Vader Saber I bought, actually I, I got, um, and then I sent to a friend of mine in Chicago and he did the very first conversion for me. And then after um, like two months or something, uh, I was having trouble with the wiring. So I took it all apart and then I decided while I had it all apart, I was going to redo some stuff and do some stuff differently anyway because I'd kind of learned enough about it. And so I redid it all that way anyway. And then I've since redone it again several more times with other LEDs and other boards and just kind of playing around with different things like that. So uh, it's really, yeah, it's fun. I enjoy tinkering. I enjoy exploring. I enjoy um, testing out stuff like this, you know, new sound systems, uh, which I'm really excited about because the freedom it brings to the Vader community or the costume community period, I guess. Um, and so, yeah. Brian, uh, I don't know if he's still on the stream or not, but he and I are both kind of that way. We like to, we like to explore and test the limits of technology and what technology can do. So, uh, hey Matt Wyatt, thanks for tuning in. Nice to have you here. Um, Pretzel Boy says it's it's blue. I don't know what you're referring to. Anyway, so yeah, I thought about hooking up this void system. But I don't know if it'll work that well in here. Um, this Well, and I don't have my helmet either, so it'll be kind of weird. Um, I guess I could hook it up anyway and try it out. You guys want to see me try it out? Just see. Try it. Yes, sure thing. Have I looked up Jeff Ives' Vader voice mod? Which one is Jeff Ives' Voider, Vader voice mod? Um let me know the answer to that because I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to. Um, so let's see. I'm going to get some wiring out here. Try this out. And we will see. I don't think it's going to sound as good because I'm not um, in costume. And my throat's tired and dry because I've been talking all day long. I've been uh, creating a video series for some for some stuff. Um, I'm creating a video series about how to work with and record and mix and stuff, uh, rap music, that I'm going to offer online, um, sell online, I should say. And so, anyway, I've talked a lot today. My voice is tired, so if it sounds tired... That's why. All right, let's see. 
Yeah, let's figure, think of how to do this so it doesn't get the least amount of stuff in the way. Nope. Yeah. Hold on, we'll get there. Okay, here's the armor. That's the breathing, obviously. Can you hear it? This, you hear it? It's so exciting, it's so crazy, it's just, just the armor. So then the voice. Sounds better when the cape kind of keeps the rattling down a bit, but. You don't know the power of the dark side. That's it. It's fun. I'm still so excited about this. It's just, it's kind of ridiculous, but uh, it's just so cool. The fact that that creates the sound right there is just, oh my God, it's awesome to me. It's so cool. Anyway, uh, yeah. Volkswagen Gamer, my costume is not Star Trek related. Definitely not. Um, I'm with Adam Savage. I'm, I think Star Wars is better than Star Trek. To buy a smidge. I like Star Trek too, but uh, anyway. <laughs> I don't know if you saw, but he started a huge feud online about that because he said something about it at uh, one of the co cons lately. So the new costume is not going to be super hot to wear. John Gavlik asked me that. So... <laughs> okay, pretzel boy. All right, pretzel boy, I'll do it. There's gonna be like impressions with, with, <laughs> Vader impressions with Jake tonight. Um, all right. And the bonus of this is, you don't get feedback either because it's just the way it works. It doesn't doesn't feedback as much. Okay. I have to think of how he says that. Don't choke on your aspirations, director, right? Isn't that what he says? Don't choke on your aspirations, director? I think he says it, yeah. Oh, no, he says careful. Careful not to choke on your aspirations, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'll hold the shoulder bells out so they don't vibrate and make it sound bad. Be careful not to choke on your aspirations, director. I don't feel like I know those lines as well, so, you know, you have to give me some leeway there. Uh, anyway. Ugh. There. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Oh, somebody said something. Uh, Volkswagen Gamer said it sounds pretty good. Uh, sounds pretty good compared to the old one. I agree. It sounds to me, and and from what Brian tells me, it sounds better than the old one. Um, same voice changer. It's just a different setup. It sounds better. It has more bass, more body to the voice, and um, and it's it comes from here when I have the helmet on, which is fantastic. So. Matt Wyatt asked if I've seen Adam dress up as Kylo Ren at a con. Yes, he wore a Novus's costume and went out and did it. I did. It looked really good. Um, we need a Chewy. John Gavlik says we need a Chewy. Yes. So uh, my friend Brian is going to be gone for a little while. Um, you won't see him on the on the vlogs for a little bit. Uh, but when he gets back, we he and I, and it'll be a while, like a while. But he and I have agreed that we're going to build Wookiee costumes. Um, so, but that's not the new costume I'm working on now. But we are going to do Wookiee costumes down the road. So, should be fun. I do. I don't like sand. It's rough here. Yeah, but he doesn't do that in, in, in Vader. It, he just does it as his whiny little Anakin self. So, anyway. Reap God. Yes, I know, Cade. I know you're desperate to do it, and it's kind of slow right now. We got SenshiCon coming up in uh, a little over a month, right? What is this? Is it July? Is it still July? August, September? Okay, so two months. Two two months. Sorry, um, two months. Yeah. And there's probably something else coming up between now and then. I don't know what it is, but we'll see. Anyway. Uh. 
So that's what I'm saying. Like, if I say it, I don't like sand. It's rough, it's irritating, and it gets everywhere. That's my Anakin. Actually, I should do more whiny. I don't like sand. Is that better? <laughs> that's, that's my impression of Anakin. Oh, man. So, it's from it's from a movie and it's from a TV series. It's been in both. It's been in all of them, actually. Not Han Solo. Nope, not Luke. Definitely not Jabba. Definitely not Jabba. Do I look that fat to you? Man, I'm going to have to watch my weight, I guess. Good Lord. Uh, Matt White says, I recently saw a post about how Anakin didn't do anything wrong. He just wanted to save his wife. Except for the child murderer. <laughs> yeah. Except for the part where he wiped out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. But he did bring balance. Two Jedi and two Sith were left after that. So. A support guy asked, think they would approve a white Vader? It's too hot for black leather in Tennessee. They will not approve a white Vader. Uh, you could do one anyway, but it wouldn't be trooping as part of the 501st. Um, and I will say, after standing in full sun on Saturday in the park, uh, in all black, whew, oh, well, I'll say this, okay, because you've got so many layers on, the sun doesn't get all the way to you through the clothing, at least. That that you have going for you, because of cape and everything, if you got any breeze, it flows and it helps. Um, the helmet gets warm, like you can feel the heat coming through the helmet, and then, uh, and maybe that's why my armor cracked, it got too hot. Uh, I'm kidding about that, but uh, whew, yeah, just standing in the sun. I felt sorry for uh, our Kylo because there's no, everything's like tight. There's no room for the air to move in between, and so she got pretty hot, plus she's all in black. Um, and then I, I I felt sorry for everybody, that troop. It was warm. It was really, really, really warm. And uh, yeah, we ended up changing on the grass in the shade because it was it was so much better than the tent they had provided us. It was already like a hundred something in there, and we weren't none of us were excited about that. So, uh, no Jabba, no Jabba. True pretzel boy. Jabba is actually quite a muscle man for his kind. Yeah, especially if you see his his mom or Zero the Hut's mom, I guess. Brian says Pitbull, and you had sunburns on your feet through your polished boots. Yikes. I didn't even think about that. Oh, man. That was, yes. And the thing is, like, you have to understand in Alaska, when it gets sunny, it's like, it's sunny. There's no getting away from the sun. It's up for 17, 18, 19 hours, and it just, it just is there, like, and it, yeah. So, and we're not used to heat. We're not used to massive amounts of heat. So it, it definitely affects us. But yeah, she's, uh, I'm not surprised you got sunburned through your boots. Sorry. That was 86. 86, no breeze. It was warm. It was really, really warm. So, and you got to realize too, the 86 up here, almost nobody has air conditioning in their houses up here. It's uh, all just open the windows and then wait for it to cool down which it doesn't because the sun doesn't go down until 11 and then it comes back up again at 2 a.m so i just yeah it's really really warm hugo Cannon asks could i move with the lightsaber in my vader suit like the vader and rogue one's last vader scene no and the reason for that is i i could um, I mean, I, I can move my lightsaber around really well, but the reason I can't move it around like Rogue One is I have hinged bells. So they've got these. Oh, you can't see them. Hold on. Because I'm a Return of the Jedi Vader. I have hinged bells. So I get these little hinges here that um, allow the bells to hinge, but they also keep them flush like that. Uh, and so that, that does not allow me... I'm, I'm working on making adjustments so that I get more arm movement but if you look at the vader in rogue one his shoulder bells are strapped so basically they can move and flex any direction and 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 do that um i i just i can't move that far if you look at empire strikes back and return of the jedi the stunt vader scenes where they're doing the fighting you can see hinges like my hinges are down below you can't see them up here but in the stunt scenes you can see the hinge right here and uh so he was able to move his armor or his shoulder bell quite a ways up. 
and that's why especially look in the scene where he's reaching out to Luke on uh, Cloud City you can see his shoulder belt comes way way up and that's because of the where the hinges place so I'm working on adjusting my hinges to be able to do a little bit more like that um. <laughs> Yeah, Reeve God, we should do a lightsaber fight between us one day. That sounds like a plan. We'll definitely have to practice quite a bit. Oh, John, sore subject. Don't talk about Brian with a droid there. So, uh, let's see. Tennessee, or support guy says, the norm for trooping any outdoor event in Tennessee during the summer is the 90s. Yeah, I would, I would bet that easily. Um... I know tons of guys do this in the south and they do it in the sun they do it outside and I just I don't know how they do it I know your body acclimates to a certain point and um, you just you have to drink a ton of water because you would be sweating so much and the sweat through the suit everything you just yeah and you probably try and stay out of direct sunlight at those temperatures but anyway it is interesting because you do have enough layers that it, it does kind of flow a bit but yeah take lots of breaks Lots and lots of breaks. I know the Disney Vaders, um, if it's not a hot, sunny day, I don't know what they define as hot. And, you know, like temperature-wise, if it's like 80 and up, they define it as hot or what. But um, they, uh, they it, on cooler days, they do 40 minutes on, 20 minutes off. And then on hot days, they do, uh, I think it's 20 minutes on and 40 minutes off. They flip-flop it like that. So that that's how they deal with it at Disney with the Vaders there. Uh, so let's see. <laughs> He's assembling Obi Wan. Nope, not Obi Wan. Not three PO. Are you kidding? Three PO? How do you think I can? I can't even fit my face in a three PO thing. Uh, let's see. Pretzel Boy says heat and pain drive the character. That's true. <laughs> the more miserable and angry you are, the better off you are. Uh, definitely true for Kylo, especially like the more uncomfortable, angry you get, the better you are as Kylo. Um. Matt asks if I've met anybody met Ray Park or if anybody's met 3PO. I haven't met any of those guys. I would love to someday. I haven't met anybody. FPN, FPSN Diver, who I know by a different name on the Sith Lord Detachment. Got your quad uh, Cree LED today. Fantastic. Glad you got it. Uh, what? Cade, you met James Earl Jones? Oh, I'm a little jealous now, man. If I ever met any of those guys, I would take something of mine and have them sign it. Somewhere where it would be not seen, unless you wanted to see it. But it would be really, really awesome. So FBNS Diver got a deep red, deep red, red, white. Cool. That sounds like that'll be a great, great combo. Uh... Does the Kylo have a melted Darth Vader mask? I don't know if she does or not, uh, honestly. Retro Gamers asks, if I think Luke is going to die in The Last Jedi? I don't think so. I don't think that Disney or Lucasfilm, I don't think Kathleen Kennedy is willing to go that far yet and, and kill off Luke Skywalker. That would be... Man, they would have to be careful if they did that. Oh, they would have to be so careful how they did it because people would, like, lose their minds. So. Uh, Pretzel Boys with, talked with Corey D. Williams because you did a music video with him for one of his songs. That is awesome. That's so cool. Uh, support guide says Palpatine looks like a comfy character to troop as loose robes, open face. The only thing that sucks is the makeup. Yeah, yeah, you, you have to do prosthetics and you have to be careful what kind of prosthetics because of the heat you'd sweat it off. But the rest of the robe, the rest of the co uh, costume is very comfortable from what I've heard. So, oh, FPS and Diver. Well, I think it depends on, yeah, uh, uh, like full mask versus applied stuff or and the contacts and stuff like that it depends on what you get for sure um only an hour your palpatine can only tolerate it for an hour wow i didn't realize it would be that bad anyway matt wyatt do i think the last jedi will be similar to empire strikes back i think it will to a degree um because star wars the 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 three prequels mirrored the original three and they're they're well on track to doing that with the next three too 
Um, and there's reason for that. It's a parallel allegory kind of a story. So, um, you know, I don't think they'll match it exactly. I hope they, they go a little further away from the original storyline um, than they did with The Force Awakens and A New Hope. But we'll see. Like in five months or so, we'll find out. And Hugo Keenan asked, did I go see Star Wars in concert when I was on tour? I did not. Uh... Walter66 uh, said they can't wipe the entire original cast. There's only one left, and Leah has to die. This is true. Well, Leah has to do something. She has to go somewhere or something. Yeah. Anyway, well, we'll see, I guess. That'll be interesting to see how they handle that. I'm very curious to see what they do. Um, FPSN Diver says there's always Chewie, R2, and 3PO. True. Although Chewie now is being played by a new guy who's doing a great job. He did most of the action scenes in The Force Awakens. So, um, R2 and 3PO. Well, no Kenny Baker anymore, unfortunately. But they, you know, R2, the robot for sure. And 3PO, that's amazing to me that he still can do R3 PO is really phenomenal. That's really something else. Anyway. So we need another K2SO. I'm sure we'll get something there. Um, yeah, we'll see. Pretzel Boy says, What if Jar Jar was on one of the planets annihilated by Starkiller Base? There would be much rejoicing from those of us who are massive fans of the original three and not such big fans of the the uh, prequels. Um, yeah. I agree with Brian. Anthony Daniels is amazing. He really is. He's really amazing. 3PO and R2, yep, they've been in every single movie. R2 in one of his many, many different forms, depending on which scene and what they wanted him to do. Nice rhyme there, Matt. Roses are red, Jedi's tell lies. Jedi tell lies. Have you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> yeah, Brian. <laughs> exactly. Watch for the inconsistencies. There's all kinds of inconsistencies in Star Wars. Um, <laughs> and then you see the original person with the mask. Yeah, yeah. So from for because Brian and I are going to do Wookiee costumes at a later date. Um, and from what I hear, if you do a Wookiee costume right, which means you like you hook and tie each individual strand of hair yourself on a mesh suit, and then you have a good quality uh, mask made or make it. Um, that articulates and stuff, then it's actually quite a comfortable suit. It's lightweight. It's not super hot because everything breathes and flows really, really well. Um, and you get to breathe fresh air and look out with your own eyes, not behind a mask. So that would be, that'll be fun. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what that's, you know, seeing, you know, how that works. I think I'll have to do like, what am I, 6'4". So I think I'm going to do like maybe uh, 4 to 6 inch, uh, soles on my feet in the in the feet to give myself to get myself closer to seven foot and then between that and the mask I should hit seven something like seven two maybe and to to be an approved Wookiee in the Rebel Legion at least you have to be seven foot or higher I believe so yeah anyway uh let's see yeah, Imprathine says you revisit the prequels every couple years hoping they get better. Jar Jar is only part of the problem. It's true. Jar Jar is only part of the problem. The writing was not very good in some scenes. The direction wasn't great in some scenes. Um, anyway, so the best part of the prequels for me was uh, um, Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan. I thought he did a just fantastic job as Obi-Wan. He was great. Anyway, so yeah so that's pretty much uh the bulk of my update for tonight my live stream for tonight i'm still um transferring over my videos like one a day as we go and uh i'll start uploading some new videos soon because i got some footage from the last troop not a lot of footage so those of you who just want to see me and my crew running around in our costumes you will see a little bit of that and other stuff um, but it's coming coming soon so I might see if I can get it uploaded tomorrow, maybe. Uh, but it probably will be the next day. 
anyway um oh walter 66 what would i do for the sound for the wookie howl uh, i i know you can do it with your own voice and i don't know i've I practiced maybe i don't know Otherwise, my thought is to, to get a little Arduino and hook it up with a speaker and, and have some triggers where I can do a couple of different, like, you know, friendly, roar, and just the regular type banter stuff or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know what happens. See you, Reeb God. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. We'll see you soon. Uh, uh, so, Infrathene asks, what's going to happen on my other channel? So my other channel, um, because I'm, I was saying earlier, I'm, I'm recording and working on tutorial videos on how to do a lot of different stuff with music and sound with um, recording in studios and mixing and mastering and then working with uh, audio for video and stuff like that. So my other channel is going to be going more, uh, well, wholly that direction now um, for now. And I started realizing that um, the this the Star Wars stuff really needed its own channel. So um, where it was just dedicated to this. That's a, this is all I do on this channel is Star Wars stuff, costume stuff, Five and First Legion stuff, um, Darth Vader stuff. And so that was the big reason for uh, switching it up. And I figured it'd be better to do it now rather than wait a few more years or, or a year or something and then um, have a harder time switching it over so um yeah bye matt thanks for tuning in um that's what's happening on my other channel and so i'm just it's gonna sit and lay low for a little bit i'll post periodic updates saying hey don't forget about the new channel head over here and subscribe stuff like that um so empathy asks, where's the family stuff going to go oh i'm um, thanks for i'm glad you like it uh i'll still be posting that up there um it let's see what am i Post. Actually, I do have a couple of videos I need to post from from family stuff that we did in the last few weeks. Uh, but yeah, so some of that stuff will be posting up there too. Um, but yeah, and then lots of tips and tricks and studio hacks and stuff like that will be going up there. Um, but yeah, so the other one is going to be more just m me, my vlogging, my stuff, studio stuff, family stuff, stuff like that. So uh yeah, be fun. And this channel, I'm kind of excited. Uh, actually, I'm pretty, I'm really excited because I get to on this channel. It's just going to be focused 100% on the stuff that we do up here in Alaska, is the the out, Alaska Outpost, the Star Wars stuff, my adventures in building string blades and new sound systems and uh, sabers and stuff like that. And um, you know, when we get to closer to the movie, we'll be doing stuff about that um reviews about that and other things like that uh depending on what happens when battlefront 2 comes out i might do some stuff with that on this channel and um yeah so it'll be fun i think maybe it won't be but i think it'll be a blast um so yeah Anyway, I've got to uh, get off because it's that time of day when my children need to go to bed. And, uh, yeah, if I don't put them to bed, they will stay up all day and all night playing nonstop because the sun is still up and will still be up for a little while. Demons Selzar asked, did you miss the sound system? You did, but... Um, the beginning I talk about it, I linked some of the stuff in the in the description below. And then uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes uh, ago, so it'd be what, like 30 minutes in or so, I I do, I actually put it on and, and tried it out so you could hear it. Um, anyway, so you just have to rewind a little bit once this is posted. <laughs> it's on there. It's on there and it's totally worth watching it for or watching for it. So it's great. Um, pretzel boy no i did not i did not name my kids luke and leah or annie they are not named that so walter good night see you tomorrow maybe uh since it's already almost tomorrow for you um anyway yeah demons uh watch it check it out and let me know what you think leave a comment and and tell me what you think of it um i'm really 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 excited about it and the potential and the possibility it has 
for uh, not just Vader's, but lots of people in costume with hard parts. It's really, really cool. So I will do um, on this channel, I, I'm going to do a more just uh, more produced video about this system and um, and kind of narrow it down, show how it was set up and everything like that. Uh, and then we'll we'll go from there. So Justin is James Crossley says Justin isn't happy. I didn't inform him that I was streaming. Depends on which Justin you're talking about it. But if it's the one you're, I think you're talking about, he's supposed to be working right now. Um, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so, yes, that's what I thought you were talking about, James. So, uh, anyway, tell him I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll be sure and text him next time before I stream. So, I do plan on doing more live streams on this channel. Uh, as I, The next few weeks are going to be really busy for me, but then I'm, I'm going to try and do that. And then, uh, like, when we're going out on troops, uh, I, I'm not going to live stream the troop because that's just not possible. But I probably will live stream a little bit before or a little bit right after the troops just to say hi and, um, you know, let you know what's coming up. And you can say hi to the whole crew uh, that I'm trooping with that we're trooping together that day. So, uh, see you, support guy. Sounds good. I'll see you on the forums in the next stream. So demons, yeah, I'm I'm curious to see what you think. Uh, definitely watch it and let me know what you think. It'd be it'd be exciting. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you, and if you haven't already, like this video, share it if you like it, and uh, subscribe to this channel if you're not subscribed now. Um, I appreciate your support. I appreciate you subscribing to my channel, liking and sharing my videos. And I will see you soon on the next video, which will be a video from my other channel that I'm uploading to this new channel. Um, and I will also see you soon on a new video from the troops that we did on Friday and Saturday this last week. And uh, look forward to hearing your comments and uh, stuff about those. So anyway, thanks again for tuning in tonight. Have a great night. I'll see you on the next video.